Hey everyone, how's it going? I hope you're all doing great, as I always say. And in this video, I have a whole bunch of little stories, and one big one. Most of them are cryptid related, so if that sounds like your cup of tea, something that you like, pull up a stump with me, and let's jump into it. Thank you for watching. My friend told me this. I met him back when we were in university. He's been living here in Texas his whole life. He drives into town almost an hour every day just to go to school, or back then he did, but he lives in the absolute far nowhere side of the county. It's incredibly quiet out where he lives. At night you can almost hear your own heartbeat. So there was an incident at his place about two years ago. At that point, he was living out on the family farm that was in the middle of nowhere in West Texas, and about an hour drive from Lubbock. His family rents out their land to a goat farmer and some rich guy who keeps his boat and workshop on their back lot. One night, my friend walks out of the kitchen and sees the light of the rich guy's boathouse is on. He thinks he may have accidentally left the light on. The rich guy's SUV isn't around, though. But he sees something else. It looks like that one of the goats is standing up, like straight up, but on top of a hay bale. Apparently goats do weird stuff all the time, so he kind of blows it off. He decides to head out to turn the boathouse light off, though. He steps out onto the porch, and... He realizes that this is probably not a goat that's standing on the hay bale. It's too skinny. The head is way too big. Whatever it is, the light from the boathouse is only partially illuminating it. And then he hears some goat sounds and looks over to where they were. The entire goat herd is totally avoiding whatever this is. They're crowded around the house's garage about 30 feet away from him. They're all huddled together, being really quiet, and they're all staring at whatever is on top of that hay bale. He looks back out, and whatever it was has moved a little bit away from that light and becomes even less visible, but he can still see its eyes in the darkness. He decides to go back inside and lock everything turns off all the lights and sleeps with his grandpa's 357 loaded and on the nightstand. In the morning though, his parents come home from the night shift and all seems to be well. None of the goats went missing, but the light was off. Whatever it was, he never saw it again. So I went on this camping trip back in 2017 or so. I was spending the Monday through Thursday of that week in the North Georgia mountains, hunting and camping. The first two days, nothing really out of the ordinary happened. Every now and then, I would run across some dead game that looked to be ripped apart. But, Wednesday night, uh, I was sitting at my campfire, cooking some small game that I caught in the forest, when everything went silent for a solid five minutes. For most of it, there was just the sound of the crackling wood on my fire. But then, this terrible sound started low and then slowly but surely got terribly loud. It started as something like a low grumble, but then quickly became this loud, ear-piercing scream. After I heard it, I felt disoriented. I couldn't tell from which direction it came, whether it was human or not. On the next night, the Thursday, I was finally packing up my stuff, and then this huge thing came to the edge of my campsite. I say came to because I didn't actually see it show up. When looking back, it was probably there the entire time that I was packing my stuff up and putting everything away, just watching me. But. I was unaware of it at the time until I started to trek back to my car, and then it didn't follow me outright. 
It's like I could feel it following me, even though I did not see it move away from my old campsite. I got this uneasy feeling. As I was walking, I was checking my surroundings. I had my 1100 Remington in my hands, in case of bears. That's when I turned around to check behind me, and I saw the thing. It was maybe 20 yards away, and huge, and hairy. I sprinted to my car, full out. Once I got to my car, I unloaded my shotgun into the direction from where I ran. I got in my car. I started backing up, and suddenly my car was assaulted by large rocks. I don't have any pictures of the damage yet, but believe you me, it definitely left a few dents. When this happened, I was between 15 and 16. I am in my 20s now. It was mid-November because I was hunting. I liked getting up before the sun to get a drop on the deer. So I'm walking down through this old trail in the woods that I'm quite familiar with. All I can hear are the sounds of the crunching under my boots and the cold icy breaths. Besides that, it's just nighttime in a wood sounds. I keep up a pretty good pace until I get to my tree stand, and then I climb up into the stand. I get to the top and I hang my pack off from the hooks in the tree. I take out my antlers and grunt call, and I sit there for maybe an hour, uh, maybe 40 minutes or so before sunrise to be exact. I decide to use the rattle and the grunt, so I rattle, rattle, grunt, and I repeat that kind of process. After doing it for as long as I felt sufficient, I just sat back. After like 20 minutes, I hear a grunt or a wheeze or something, and I think, oh cool, it's a big buck. And I hear this a couple more times, so I'm thinking that I'm hearing, you know, a big horny buck coming my way. I hear the crunch, crunch, and then it stops. The deer fever is taking over, and I'm shaking with excitement. I've never shot a buck before, especially not on my own. This is my first one. I can hear the buck moving around ten yards away from my stand. With bated breath, I listen. The moon is quite bright tonight, so I can see in the darkness. I can't see the forest floor that well but a ray of moonlight passes by my tree that's low to the ground. The buck's getting closer. I get my gun ready. I aim downwards to the right of my stand. The buck is heading literally a foot away from my tree. I can see his antlers in the small ray of moonlight. And while I was waiting for my shot, I thought of this local contest that was going on, that if you get the biggest buck, you get uh, $200 or something. So, the rack is big, and the deer is bigger. I wait till I can see its body to take a shot, but I never get to see the body. The moonlight rays split between the two trees, and the deer's path with the pitch black is where there is no rays. I can't see the deer after the rack leaves the moonlight. I can hear it, though. It's going past me. And then, at the corner of my vision... I see something else move. I snap my eyes to it, and it's an elongated human foot and calf that passes through the moonlight. I think, what the hell? My brain just kind of fogs up. I kind of sit there for a while wondering what I just saw. Literally, it was a person walking or crawling on all fours. My brain suddenly realizes what happened and my stomach drops and the adrenaline starts pumping. I slowly sit back in the tree stand, trying to be as quiet as possible. My back sits against the bark of the tree. I'm clutching my rifle while hyperventilating. I'm scared out my ass. The fear is straight primal, as if I'm now the one being hunted instead of the other way around. I want to look behind me, but this thing in my head tells me, don't do that. I feel compelled to do it, and I do it against my better judgment. 
I slowly look up the hill, scanning the perimeter of the area that I can see, and it goes, nothing, nothing, and then eyes, and then nothing. I snap back to the eyes. They are the most piercingly menacing eyes I have ever seen in my life. They have red eye whites, and its pupils are almost flickering or glowing, and I can just barely see the elongated humanoid form. I immediately sit back against the tree, gripping my rifle so tightly that my nails are scratching into the barrel. Eventually, I must have passed out. I wake up and it's daytime. My rifle is still in my lap. I look around and I don't see anything. I basically fireman slide down the ladder to the stand, bolt back to my dad's truck that he let me drive. I hop in and I drive home at the speed of light. I feel like there's something else that I'm forgetting, but my brain's just kind of blocking it out. I don't know. But yeah, that's what happened. Back in 2015, I was out taking a walk in the country, and there's dogs all over the neighborhood going crazy, but they do this every night, so it's not really anything that's out of the ordinary. I pass this off as probably coyotes because there's also a lot of those around here, and you should see it. Sometimes it's pretty funny because the dogs and the coyotes will get in a howling match, but I got to this section of the graveyard that I was walking past that's always super quiet. This was the reason why a neighbor friend and I never really walked to each other's house because we had to go through this weird part. But on this particular night, on this walk, I heard shifting in the woods. I passed it off as an animal. It's by a cemetery and some kind of electrical center thing that connects to poles that span countless properties. It's on the top of a hill in between our houses with a few street lights. Hurriedly, I start walking away and making as much noise as I can to try and either scare it off or whatever. I even light a cigarette to try and calm down. I suddenly hear bipedal feet patter running from behind me. I run for a bit. I stop when I run out of breath and I turn around. I don't see anything. There's people out here, so I figured it must have been someone playing a prank. But I look around at some houses I can see and there's no lights on. Everybody's inside. I get out my pocket knife and I keep walking, kind of on guard. The dogs have all stopped. I look behind me just after a few steps, and then I see it. This human-like, or humanoid, I don't know. Its skin was so weird looking, so wrinkled. It looked like it was draped. If you know what a berserker viking zombie is, then it looked like that. I almost tripped trying to run, but the way it looked at me, the way it stopped on the trail, it just kind of cricked its head to the side and looked me up and down like it was intelligently analyzing me. I ran until I got home, full sprint. There were people outside of my house on the next few blocks. They asked, what's going on, buddy? What's the deal? I said you wouldn't believe me, and lo and behold, they didn't. So... I don't know what I saw. To be honest, that was the first and only time that I've ever actually gone on a night walk. I still don't know what possessed me to do it in the first place. So this may not be a typical cryptid encounter, but it does show how the wilderness can be very unforgiving at times. This happened when I was 18. I have lived in the woods for most of my life. This particular time, I was out camping with my dad and my younger brother. We're all pretty familiar with the area. We all have good wilderness skills. We're only about 10 miles from civilization, 
this was supposed to be a quick trip. So we had gone out for a short hike at dusk. We were looking for firewood. My brother steps off the path to grab a piece, and we don't hear him crash back on the trail afterwards. Seriously, the kid can be loud as hell. Elephants stampeding through a marching bands make less noise. We figure that he's just answering nature's call, but for five minutes we hear nothing, so we become a little bit concerned, since he's only 15. We start calling for him, yelling his name. We start moving in the direction that he headed off. It's seriously dark now. We stop and get our flashlights out. All of a sudden, the area is filled with this dense fog. We're all confused. This area is never foggy, especially not this time of year. We try our best to stay calm. We keep looking for him, following the search and rescue protocol, calling, waiting for a response, then calling again. We search for hours. There's no way he could have gotten this far in just five minutes. At one point, we're calling, and we get a response for five minutes. Then, when we get close, it stops. This happens three more times in different directions. Eventually, we get lucky. We find him cold, dehydrated, and very exhausted. It was 90 degrees out that night, and he was freezing. He swears that he stepped off the path, turned around, and was back where we left him within five minutes. Then, he stayed there until we found him again. And sure enough, it is the same point on the trail. The point that we had covered several times. Not only that, but we weren't that far from camp. We were a straight one quarter mile back. But it took us the rest of the night hiking to get back to our camp. Everything looked different. We couldn't find it until daybreak. What the hell happened? Were we just that ill-equipped for the fog? Why did my brother seem to be responding from different points in the woods? Were we seriously looking for him for five hours, and then another seven or so hours trying to find the camp that should have been right there on a straight stretch of trail? We were hiking in one direction the whole way back to camp. In seven hours, we surely should have came across something. I live in South Africa. This happened way back when I was 16. The local church had organized a youth camp to a place called Dundee. It was a farm town in South Africa. We're going to be staying on this farm that gets used for school excursions and stuff like that. We get there on a Sunday night, and everyone's pumped for a good time. Some of the kids from the local camp come with us, and there's a few kids from other various cities. There's like 62 of us or something overall. The girls and boys get split up, so no funky business goes on. Us guys spend the night getting to know each other and telling funny stories. Eventually, that time of the night comes where we start trying to tell scary stories that we've heard to try and scare each other. My one bro tells the guys about the Bloody Mary legend. The local kids are in a pretty remote area, so this creeps them out, and we laugh about it. Back then, it was about the time that Harry Potter was popular, and being the moviegoer that I was, I was somehow ended up trying to learn the parcel tongue language. I knew a little Latin from some of the hymns, so I just missed random words and hissed and just scared everyone. Some of them got so mad that they decided to just go to bed. Then, my one bro tells us this story about a South African urban legend called the Takalosh. Apparently, it's this guy who basically wanders around, haunting people. Once he starts haunting you, he never stops. He never leaves you alone. He'll come to you in the middle of the night and stare at you for three nights in a row while you sleep. If you wake up, he kills you. 
the accounts on how you can die from this vary, from him taking your soul to straight up cutting your heart out. Now, I might be a black guy in South Africa, but I was raised by my white dad, and my black mom was raised by her Portuguese grandma, so I have little knowledge about South African folklore. I laugh it off, but it seems that everyone but me knows about the Takalosh, and they're visibly creeped out. We all go to bed after this. The next day, some of the guys tell their girlfriends about what we did last night, and it seems that the girls did something similar. We get split into four groups of boys and girls. There's usually four of us in a group. We get told that we're going to do some activities and we have to compete against each other. And to be honest, this was the least of our concern. We were just there to have fun. That afternoon, my bro needs to use the restroom and the closest one has no working lights. He goes in and starts doing his business. I wait about three minutes and I decide to prank him. I turn the water on in one of the basins and go to the door and scream Bloody Mary twice. He flips out and runs out, pants down. I start laughing at him. I was a bit of an asshole like that. He laughs it off and goes back to finish, but I ended up doing it again. So he doesn't go in with me afterwards, obviously. That evening, we're all sitting around the campfire and telling more stories. I do the parcel tongue thing again and scare some of the girls. We all laugh. One of the counselors tells us another story about the Takalosh and claims that some farmers working nearby died because of it. We call BS on this. He says, okay, I'll show you. He takes us to a fenced clearing about a hundred meters from the dorms and there are fresh graves there, four of them. We definitely nope out of there and decide to go to bed shortly after. The next morning, some of the girls complain that I was crawling around in their ceiling, speaking my parcel tongue. I was legitimately asleep, and the counselor lets them know that there's no space in the ceiling to crawl around in. It's impossible to get to from the boys' dorm anyways. I would have had to go through the counselor's rooms. And then someone asks, if it wasn't Rick, then who was it? We're all starting to freak out a little bit. The whole day, we're just joking about it, but the local kids don't want to talk about what's happening. Finally, one of them tells us that this is how some of the Takalosh stories go. Then he asks if any of us have messed with any type of ritual. I tell them that I did the Bloody Mary thing, but never finished it, and I kept swapping out with... Biggie Smalls and all this other stuff, just as a joke. He says that that might have had an effect, but he doubts it. We get told we have to pack our sleeping gear because we're going to move locations after climbing this large hill the next day. That night, one of the guys wakes up feeling cold and wants us to close the window, but none of the windows are open. He looks out and sees a shadowy figure moving near the small cemetery. He flips out and wakes up. We see the shadow that's humanoid, just kind of shambling along the ground. So we're pretty freaked out. We start praying. I'm not super religious, but I prayed like a choir boy. The shadow moves into the woods, and we basically huddle there till morning. We were so scared that for the rest of the night, we ended up going to the bathroom in buckets just so we wouldn't have to leave the dorm and go outside with that thing. Morning finally comes and nobody wants to talk. I ask one of the girls why they're so quiet, and it seems that they've been hearing the parcel tongue like voice once again. We tell them about the shadow, and it seems that they heard voices around 126 to 256. We saw the shadow at 3.05, and it left at 3.13. We're all collectively terrified, but we start chilling out because we remember that we're moving camp locations. To do this, we're going to ride a tractor pulling a bus-like trailer to the base of the hill, but then it breaks down halfway there. We leave it and have to walk the rest of the way. 
We see the tractor heading back and realize that it was a prank to make us walk and apparently stop being lazy. The hill takes much longer to climb than we expected, but we push on. It takes seven hours for the whole group to make it. At the top, there are tents already set up. Our sleep gear is there. They tell us that we're going to spend the night there, and I think, that's stupid. We want to nope all the way back home, but it's cold and dark out. Even if we were to get back, there's nowhere else to go. A few of the guys get together and come up with the if something happens plan. We decide that we're going to grab the girls from our group and bail all the way downhill on our own. We're not too worried about the rest of people. They can sort themselves out. Coming up with this plan seems to ease us a little bit, and we even chill out and start joking around again. We're all chilled after being there for a few hours, and we're sitting around the campfire. One of the camp cooks tells us that his son had passed away recently. We ask about it, and it turns out that his son was one of the people that was allegedly killed by the Takalosh. Well, so much for calming down, right? We decide that going to bed is the best way to go. We go to bed at like 9. At about 1, three of us wake up, and it's super cold. I look up and realize that I'm not in my tent. My cushion, my sleeping bag are all out in the open. And I think, oh, real funny guys. I move my stuff back into the tent, but the other guys have no idea why that they're outside also. We go back to sleep, but an hour later, the same thing happens. But this time, there are seven of us, including girls outside. I realize it was only us who made the SHTF plan. We told no one, not even the girls that we were going to save. As we're taking our stuff back in, we see a shadow moving a girl out of her tent. I want to just yell, but I can't move. My friend starts yelling, and that makes me start yelling too. The girl wakes up and screams. The shadow runs off into the woods. The counselors decide to call for transport so we can leave, but this time the tractor is broken for real. One of my friends asks about the plan, but I tell him why would we risk going off into the dark by ourselves. We decide to arm ourselves with sticks and rocks. No one has any weapons. We are all too scared to sleep. We see a shadow moving in the distance, but it didn't come closer than that. We also hear that parcel tongue-like voice until near dawn. At first light, we pack up in silence and nope our way back down to base camp. We call the guy who brought us there and tell him that we all want to go home. The shadow was the closest thing to something like a cryptid or supernatural that I've ever seen. It kept changing for some reason. I have trouble recalling what its face looked like. I later heard that those who see a Takalosh never remember its face, just a shadow. I avoid dark alleys and never go in a woods. I don't know what that was, but I don't want to find out. Why did it take us out of the tents? Who sabotaged the tractor? I don't know. So, what'd you think of those encounters? Let me know which one was your favorite one down in the comments. Do you have an encounter of your own? I have an email in the description below that you can send it to if you want to. I also have a PayPal and a Patreon down there as well if that's something that you're interested in. And with that, I think that I will thank you for pulling up a stump. And if you haven't already, then definitely subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.